guests. They've both come on the podcast twice now. Uh, both have come on for their own guest speaker episode and an album analysis episode uh, that they both came on towards the end of 2020. Of course, I'm talking about Washi and Cameron Iandolo with their new single, Cold Love. I've been caught up in that cold love, cold love better than no love. I pray to God that he can keep me above because I've been caught up in that cold love. I also wrote a full-length article, actually a couple songs on this episode I wrote full-length articles for. This one happens to be on Boston Hassle, so I'll link that in the description if anyone wants to actually check out that article. Uh, you know, I've been doing a little bit of writing here and there. So anyway, uh, Massachusetts hip-hop artists Washi and Cameron Iandolo. Washi's originally from New York, but has since resided in Massachusetts for a number of years. Cameron Iandolo, originally from Malden, Massachusetts. Stylistically, definitely not a match in what I would consider. Um, I never would have thought that they would actually do a song together. And they, they joke around. They say that I, quote unquote, fathered this song. So this is kind of my baby, too, in a little bit, a little bit of a sense uh, for me, because I, I, I have kind of a personal attachment to it since I'm close with both these guys. I don't want that to bias my opinion on this song. But <laughs> overall, I'll start here and just say that I was pleasantly surprised uh, and pleasantly surprised enough to write something about it. I felt passionate enough to write about this song. Um, you know, cause Washi typically does more like, you know, almost like I would consider like rap pop me harmonic melodies. It's more like his style. Right. And then Cameron Iandolo is more in just like of the traditional hip hop, a little bit, uh, technique, he's a little more gritty with it. Um, and again, el there's elements of this song that in terms of the instrumental, uh, that I think suit them both. Uh, I, I think it obviously uh, this song features a heavy 808, uh, you know, blended with a lush piano sample and highlights some dark melancholy undertones. Um, I really like Washi's melodic auto-tuned croons. I almost, there's part of me that feels it's a little bit too much on the auto-tune side. I almost sometimes wish he would dial back on that just a tad. Um, but I think it fits in, in terms of, of the style with the song. And then I, and Cameron has really nice, uh, aggressive double time flows on his, on his uh, side of the song. And uh, so that's really where I'll start with this. And I'll get into more like the deeper, uh, you know, sentimental sides of like what cold love really means. But before I do that, I definitely would love to hear uh, your initial thoughts when you when you heard cold love. Yeah. So uh, cold love, Washi, Cameron, I and Dolo, we had I remember uh, you had included Washi on our t your top 20 Massachusetts singles, right? For Cameron was too. They, they both were actually Cameron as they, well. They both made it. Yeah. Yeah. They both made a song uh, on there. Uh, Cameron's. Right. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I will say this too. Uh, those, both those songs, I definitely like a lot more than this one. I think this one's just like a, um, it, it's definitely deep. It's dark, but I felt, I find more replayability with um, even still um, growing pains from, from Washi that was really high on my list last year. And then of course, um, Cameron I and Dolo's In My Head, which funny though, because, you know, if you hit listen to In My Head, and then Cold Love, the styles really fit very nicely. Uh, and, and it's kind of interesting because Cam hasn't really done a lot of this type of music in the past, if you hear like some of his older stuff. So it's very interesting that he's sort of been able to show his versatility a little bit uh, stylistically. But anyway, so yes, yeah, so you're right. Those two songs did, in fact, make my, make my list from last year. Yeah. And that's what put me on to Washi and both Cameron I and Dolo. Um, and I really, I really did, uh, enjoy Growing Pains. Um, that was very, very memorable for me from Washi. Um, and you know, you kind of went on this whole bit saying that you fathered this, this is kind of your baby or a product that's a collab kind of product of you maybe networking and stuff. That's really cool, man. But I guess you're kind of at fault for this as well. Uh, I gotta be honest, man. I like Washi stuff and I like Cameron I and Dolo. This one to me wasn't it. It, it uh, That's I, you know, and again, like we said, we had a disclaimer about all of our constructive criticisms, and I hope Washi and Cameron Iandolo can both understand that this is just me judging this single song. Um, and like I've said, I already gave my compliments to kind of you know lighten this up, <laughs> but uh, the Jordan Peterson opening little intro bit. That was funny. I think anybody who knows Jordan Peterson understands he's a polarizing person. And I, I think that initially was, I was wondering where this was going to go. 
And, and it was interesting to say the least, but I do have my own feelings separate from Jordan Peterson. But I can't hold you guys. You know, I can't hold the Wash here, Cameron Iandolo. If I don't know how much they know about him or if maybe just that excerpt was kind of fit the vision for this. Um, but you kind of already spoke about the auto tune, I guess, kind of just going from the beginning of the song. Uh, when I heard the auto tune on Washi's voice, I thought it was a little too much. I thought it was a little exaggerated. And uh, to be quite honest, I-, I felt like it already at the beginning of the song highlighted to me that the 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 auto tune was a little much, but the mix didn't sound very clear or very crisp. Uh, I felt like the the auto tune kind of was distorting Washi's voice in a weird way, and and kind of was uh you know the auto tune was registering on certain lar- lines and bars that maybe didn't need that auto tune effect um but i do think throughout the verse it was kind of just heavy handed in general um and i felt like uh you know there are some lyrics that that washi had while he was getting in his rapping bag which again i'm not familiar with him rapping so that was that was interesting and i i like at least this feels like maybe he's uh you know, kind of dipping into different kinds of sounds. and But again, I'm not familiar with his whole catalog, but I did like Growing Pains, and I kind of judged him as a and ish kind of melodic artist before this, so this is the first time I heard him spin. I, I, I gotta say, I'm trying to keep it a buck, you know what I mean? I'm trying to keep it a buck, so I hope this does not ruin any potential relationships for me to have a washy song, because, boy, I would love that. <laughs> but... I thought the rapping, man, it wasn't necessarily, at least on this cut, wasn't the strongest um, from either of my my brothers on this track right now. Uh, uh, Washi had some funny lyrics that I think these lyrics are actually memorable and funny when it the situation and the theme of the whole song wasn't necessarily supposed to be lighthearted. Obviously, it was uh, Cold Love. Mm-hmm. Um, just off that title alone, you can assume that the the uh, song is supposed to be dark and what it's about and the beat did fit that scenario as well i thought the purchase the drone angle line that one is uh, and uh the and honestly after his verse and it and it going back into the hook the the mix stood out again to me as something that just wasn't sitting right it didn't it didn't feel like uh whether it was the vocals uh, kind of sitting above the beat instead of like within the beat mm-hmm. uh, or just the the exaggerated effects to it that you know exaggerated to the point where I felt like it came off just very artificial you know what I mean mm-hmm. I, and obviously granted it's auto-tune and that's kind of uh, the gist of that but as we know, like auto tune can be used very, very. You can use it sparingly and completely change the feel of a track with it. And obviously, there are artists that use it very, very heavily. Um, but it kind of goes with their voice and it fits a certain thing they're going for. And I it didn't quite land for me on this track. And uh, when Cameron's verse came in, Cameron Iandola's verse came in. I thought that also sounded uh the mix sounded really rough i thought it sounded breathy um and again kind of stood above the mix and it i've i'm assuming they you know it's a pandemic so i'm assuming they didn't necessarily record this together i don't believe it also right but it, it the his verse just also had like dramatically a different dynamic than what washi's vocals sounded like and again i both think that they didn't it didn't really get mixed very well and i don't know who mixed it so if if washi also mixed this i'm i'm sorry i apologize he did Uh, but but again these are all constructive criticisms and i've heard good showings from both of these artists in other places so this uh by no means is gonna influence the way i feel about them as complete artists and whether or not i'm gonna listen to the next track um like that's a foregone conclusion i'm definitely still gonna come back and listen to their next stuff um but i i did i did like the way cameron picked up you know switched up the flows at certain points um Mm -hmm. definitely like you were saying had some double time like little triplet kind of flows here and there and uh that that was a good change of pace um but i think for me personally the the mix the effects kind of uh took away from all of it and i i wasn't so I wasn't uh, really captivated by all of the lyrics 
at most of the times, and I, I thought the uh, the chorus was overall just a little a little weak. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna be honest, um, but. That's fine. Again, yeah. This is nothing it's, to. This isn't me. It's your opinion, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna deflect and put this back on the mic as <laughs> soon as I can. <laughs> well, okay. So just just a couple caveats. I mean, I one. I also agree. This isn't my favorite. I've I've heard from either of them. I do now. I do enjoy the song. I know it's a little bit. Of, I have a little bit of bias in it as well. But I I definitely do enjoy the song for sure. Um, but is it my favorite of theirs? Definitely not. I would, I would definitely say that. And what I have heard from both of them, what they have in the vault, uh, is far superior quality to this. So, like, both the things mm-hmm. they have in the vault, like, are – like, Cam's got some and crazy shit. And I've already heard cuts. I've heard cuts that I've enjoyed way more than this, definitely. Yeah, no doubt. So, that at least – you know, like, I, so I, I'm glad at least you said that, like, you know, that, you know, this is not a reflection on either of them as an artist and things like that. And just because you don't like it doesn't mean that other people won't when they hear it. And of course, like I said, I actually just, I genuinely do enjoy the track. Some of your points I do agree with in a sense. I do see, um, now, now looking back on it, maybe there are some uh, instances where the mix wasn't as uh, clean as it could have been. Maybe that was the point. I don't know, or maybe not. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that, um, like you said, it, they didn't record it together, so that's just it's it's kind of a difficult uh, difficult thing if you're not recording it together. But um, in that sense, it can be can be difficult at times, or especially if you're not you know sending it out to get engineered. But typically, you know, Washi does all his engineering himself. So like on his last EP, he did his all you know he did all the engineering on that, and I thought that came out really great. So it's not like damn it, I had a feeling he did. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, <laughs> he, t- he could typically he's he's I mean he's a self taught engineer, and and right and more power to him. I think that that's amazing that. You know, people are actually picking up skills, especially during this pandemic time. You know what I mean? Like picking up skills Definitely. that they can u- utilize and things like that. So not trying to outsource everything because that can get expensive. But, you know, overall, like for me, I think there's there's definitely a roughness to this song. But I, I thought that was kind of the point in essence because of sort of the roughness of the actual like uh, content in it. Because I obviously, you know, I wrote about it too. I wrote about, you know, how Washi talks a little bit about you know, uh, how people can maybe appear supportive on the surface, but then behind closed doors, they're sort of passing judgment and, you know, reflecting jealousy and things of that nature. Sort of like they both kind of give their own meaning of what cold love is to them. And then Cam sort of focuses more or less on like his journey as an artist, sort of claiming that people like didn't support his come up. And those are the same people that now act like his closest friend, uh, fans and friends, because like he's receiving some recognition and shine. He just had a song with Jaron Benton. So like now all of a sudden people are kind of coming back around being like, Oh, yo, Cam, you're sick. You know what I mean? When in reality, like maybe they haven't been riding with him forever. So I kind of liked the sentiments, um, that they were discussing in the, in the track. So maybe in, but again, I, not my favorite of theirs for sure, but I definitely saw some value in it. Again, there's a little bit of bias there. I'll be curious to hear what people have to say uh, about this song and the reception, how they feel. Um, but once again, again, take our opinions with a, glint, with a grain of salt. Uh, clearly, you and I disagree a little bit on our enjoyability of it. But right. I'm actually not 100. I'm actually, to be honest with you, though, I'm not that surprised because I wouldn't have actually, when I suggested this song, I was actually. I didn't really actually expect you were going to like it that much, to be quite honest. Just knowing your taste, I didn't think that this was going to be something in your bag. Like, as I was looking through the list again, I was like, man, Phoenix might not like this one as much. And and so I'm mm-hmm. not surprised, actually, that you're not as much of a yeah. fan of it. And I think I think a lot of it has to do with the style. So just because that's not yeah. really your typical bag and, 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 and what you yeah. enjoy. And I just got to keep it a buck, you know? I just got to keep it a buck with and you. That's fine. Got to keep it and a buck fine. with myself. And I got to keep it a buck with Washi, Cameron Iandolo, and any of the other artists we're talking about. That uh, in, in reality, this one I felt like was a particularly weak showing. I've definitely heard things from both of these artists that were better than this. And I, I think the rapping was just a little lackluster the some funny lines here and there in the midst of that were funny in ways that I think were not intentionally funny <laughs> and uh in terms of the uh the mix especially if you know if Washi's self-taught and engineering one it's like more power to you for sure because uh, that's amazing and definitely makes you a more valuable artist across the board but maybe this can be a point of where he can go back and be like what the f- is this man talking about and then maybe he'll see maybe he'll hear some of the things i'm, I'm trying to say uh and that's fine i, I, I think i think he's uh, i think he's willing to take the constructive criticism he asks me a lot and on and to believe it or not i think it's good to have you on these things because as you being an artist yourself 
you hear things from an artist's perspective and I, I am more from a, obviously a consumer perspective. So mm -hmm. in, there's a lot of things when he asks my advice, it's not, I can't always give the best. I come from it from mm -hmm. a consumer's perspective because I don't know how to fix some of these things as like you're talking about because mm -hmm. I don't do it myself. So I'm not going to sit here and act like, you know, I, and then I'm not, you know, one can't put myself on a pedestal either in terms of like, you know, what advice I can give, but also at the same right. time, you know, I, that's just not my, that's not my expertise. I come from it from more of a, from an ear, uh, you know, obviously an, an audible perspective rather than an artist perspective. So, I mean, it's, it's interesting and I'm, and I'm, I'm glad, and, and, and listen, that's, it would, it would be to no one's benefit if we just came on here and talked and said every song was, oh yeah, that's amazing. This is amazing. That's amazing. And that, that's the whole point of this is just to, to get into the nitty gritty detail and, share our opinions and start those conversations. So if you guys agree or disagree with us, we want to hear from you. Uh, all love to Washington, Cameron Iandolo. It's not no, no knock from sure from Phoenix. And I, and I know, uh, Hey, you know, don't kill me. And if you want to kill me, kill me in the comments. Cause we can use the engagement. <laughs> all right. Kill me in the comments. Send the washi hive to me. I'll take it. <laughs> we, we, we've both been killed in the comments for different reasons, uh, you and I. That's a fact. In different that times. Is so it's, a so fact. I don't think were... I'll ever experience the wrath that Mike's <laughs> had to endure after mentioning Taylor Swift's name. I didn't even want to say her name. I don't even want to. Yeah, let's let's not let's not even go there because I because I definitely won't. <laughs> it's like saying Macbeth in a theater. It's like <laughs> exactly. 